EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Martich here with your outlook for September 11th, 2023. It is Monday, beginning of the new work week, and it is also Patriot Day, which of course we recognize and remember the tragedy of the lives lost on September 11th, 2001. Kinsley's Family Market in Broadheadsville, Monroe County, Pennsylvania, sponsors the Monday video forecast. With the kids back to school and the days winding up and down, why not stop into Kinsley ShopRite for some grab-and-go meal ideas? They have prepared dinners to go in their cafe, such as fried chicken, meatballs, barbecue ribs, chicken marsala, eggplant parmesan, where you just have to heat and eat. They also have great seafood dinners to go in their seafood department, featuring crab meat stuffed flounder, mango lime salmon, panko breaded shrimp, crab stuffed mushrooms, and mussels marinara of a pasta. Boy, it doesn't make me hungry. And again, you just have to take and bake, and that's it. Along with your cut fruits and vegetables, desserts, and much more. So stop by Kinsley ShopRite, where they always have the fresh fresh ideas for your family meals. Kinsley is the world's largest ShopRite, and the ShopRite logo, of course, means they are all about food, they are all about savings, and they're all about you. They are Kinsley ShopRite in Broadheadsville, Monroe County, Pennsylvania, proud sponsors of the Monday video forecast. So the stalled boundary that has been just never going away, it's endless. It's still here today. Uh, it's going to be in a, a much uh, weaker state than it has been over the past couple days. It's still here, uh, but there will be some uh, some showers possible today. Uh, but I think you're going to be partly sunny today overall. Uh, 76 to 84 is the temperature spread, so not quite as warm as it was, of course, last week when it was very hot. Uh, we're looking at uh, partly sunny skies today, and this boundary is going to finally uh, kick out of here today. Finally going to move east, but on, as a parting shot, you could have a shower or an isolated garden variety thunderstorm as this moves out. Uh, the high-resolution rapid refresh has this. This is looking at uh, noon, so it has a few spotty showers starting to pop here, uh, you know, right around noon or whatever, and then moving down to the south and east. Just very widely scattered activity here here on the high-resolution res rapid refresh, and I hope it's looking like the uh, HRRR has here because we have uh, a double header in South Philadelphia with the Atlanta Braves, the Philadelphia Phillies, of course, uh, looking at a 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock doubleheader. It's a split doubleheader today uh, because the NAM High Res Future Simulator Radar, looking at the afternoon, has a little bit different of a picture and has a little bit closer to uh, the southeastern areas where it has some isolated showers and thunderstorms in the vicinity. Again, this is just widely scattered stuff. This is not uh, you know a lot, a big concentration of showers and storms like we've had over several of the previous days. This is not uh, looking like that today because the boundary is just barely hanging on by de uh, to dear life right now, and it's going to be finally moving out of here uh, on uh, or overnight tonight. We've become partly cloudy overnight after that evening shower or storm in a few spots. And again, they're going to be very arbitrarily placed. I can't really say that well, one area is going to get a better chance than another. I will say that uh, probably the best concentration for any storm activity is going to be down in here as opposed to up here where you have a little bit more sun and less in the way of precipitation. But that's kind of micromanaging it a little bit. I just think it's going to pop up just about anywhere because that boundary is still in the vicinity. Here's a look at Tuesday. I uh, don't have any precipitation on Tuesday. We're a mix of clouds and sun. And temperatures very slightly higher than today. 78 to 85 is a spread on Tuesday, as you can see above me here, in the, but no mentions of precipitation. But once we get in the overnight, this cold front will be approaching in the lead of a trough. It's going to give some showers coming in probably after midnight for most places further east, but it could start in you know, late evening in central Pennsylvania. And that goes into Wednesday morning. It looks like it's just a Wednesday morning deal uh, as we get over the NAM here again, just to show you what it's, it's doing. Here's that uh, precipitation coming in with the front. And it's not a lot, but there are some, there's some, uh, mainly showers that are coming in, you know, later in the overnight or late evening and overnight here. And then it goes into, this, this stops at 8 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. Still have some showers in the morning on Wednesday. There could be a few thunderstorms following that in the afternoon. So maybe just, again, widely scattered stuff, kind of like you're going to see today. Not a whole lot of precipitation with that. And then once that front moves through, we are going to be a lot cooler because we have a big trough settling in that's situated up here in high pressure. This is actually, I'll draw an H here because that's what it is. Big high pressure that's sitting here, and it's going to kick all this out of here. Uh, now, the timing of this high pressure is going to be key to this down here, which of course is Hurricane Lee, and everybody's been. Uh, I, I listen. I, I I ignore the nonsense uh, because you know I've seen my some of my colleagues share it on Twitter, 
and that's the only reason I see it. Uh, I don't go on TikTok. TikTok's to me, I'm 47 years old. I don't deal with TikTok. Um, but even on Twitter and uh, Facebook and things like that, I've seen some things that are kind of doom and gloom posts with this about how it's going to do. One of these numbers come up the coast and do a left hook just like Sandy did into the New Jersey coast or New York City or uh, you know Long Island, something like that. Uh, that is not the case. That is not what we're looking at with this particular system, and that's because the uh, this trough is moving in. It's not so much this front that's that's going to pick it up in this case. It's this high pressure that's behind it. If this high pressure builds in behind here, it's, you can't go through that high pressure. So it's going to kind of guide things up in this direction. Now, question is, does it go toward Atlantic Canada up in this direction, or does it come a little bit closer and go into South, you know, scrape New England on the way out here? That is still in question. So if you have any family in eastern New England, that's something that you'd want to, uh, you know, pay attention to because we have, um, you know, we, we do have this, some tracks here. Let me get that uh, hurricane. I, I had this uh, prepared. I just didn't uh, give me a second. Where is it? Okay, so here's the um, the hurricane tracks. I'm going to try to get this up here. Here we go. Okay, so these are the ensemble tracks here. Uh, I didn't have it prepared before I did the video, but I don't want to start the video over here. So we're just going to just ad lib here. Uh, this is where the hurricane is. And these are all the individual ensemble members from the European ensemble. Not much different from if you saw the videos on Friday and on Friday and Saturday. The track hasn't changed here on the ensembles. It's pretty much doing the same thing. A few of these westernmost members here get awfully close to New England. So that's where we have to watch uh, the possibility of it getting in here. You'll notice here's the New Jersey Shore, though. There's nothing over here. Nothing. Not one of them. And there's 50 of them, uh, including the operational members, uh, operational run, and nothing uh, shows anything coming to our area. But these areas here in eastern New England especially have to pay attention, and, of course, Atlantic Canada as well. So we're going to watch that over the next couple of days for them because we, have, we do have clients uh, up in uh, parts of the northeast as well some of our business clients, so we have to monitor that for them too. Uh, but I don't think this is going to be a huge deal uh, other in our area except for rip currents, maybe some strong surf and that kind of thing. Uh, but I, we're not looking at uh, any direct impacts, okay? I'm not looking at any rain from this. Now, one thing I will say about this, uh, and here's the storm itself as we go over to the uh, visible satellite. Uh, it has, if you, look, if you follow this over the weekend, it had a very strong eye last week. It was a Category 5 storm. Lost the eye. was getting some westerly shear, and I explained that in the video. In addition to that, that westerly shear, which is now relaxed, um, there was an eye wall replacement cycle where the uh, there was a an outer ring that, that choked off the inner eye wall and made this eye bigger, and it also made the hurricane itself bigger. When you go through an eye wall replacement cycle, that's a consequence of... Uh, you know, uh, of this uh, that cycle completing, okay? But you'll notice there's now a defined in the center. There's now a find an almost concentric eye going here again uh, that wasn't present pretty much most of this weekend. So it is strengthening. It's back to Category 3. The time this video is recorded, it might continue to a 4. It's actually expected to. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to 5 again, but it's not, not out of the question. But it will eventually uh, curve off to the north here, and that's what the European model is doing here. You can see here. You see, it just makes that, that turn and heads off to the north. Now, is it going to be this far east like the European model has it? Now, even even with this, I don't know. I don't know if it's it does still affect up parts of uh, coastal Maine. Even with that uh, that track, even if it does something like that or it comes a little bit further west out like this, you know, we'll see. Uh, there, there, that's still to be, to, to be determined. Uh, I don't really think that changes the game for us here locally. But what I will say about these hurricanes is when they move up the coast and start getting latitude north like this, they tend to expand the wind field. The hurricane itself gets bigger in size and diameter, and it also the wind field expands. So uh, not impossible to see some gusty winds here at the New Jersey shore, even though it's hundreds, hundreds of miles off the coast, because the storm's going to be so large when it comes up to this latitude. At this, If it's all the way out here like this, probably not. Probably not. Um, you know, this is a couple hundred miles off the coast, but this, instead of being here, if the center's over here instead, instead of here, uh, that could be that could be the difference of, of getting wind to the shore or not. So we'll continue to watch this this week, but I don't expect any direct impacts uh, from this system. And the Thursday onward period this week is going to be mostly sunny. We're going to have refreshing temperatures. We're going to be in the lower 70s generally. Eventually, we get to the weekend, still mostly Sunday, but mid, mid maybe mid, mid 70s on Saturday, mid to upper 70s on Sunday. So, a very nice uh, stretch coming up here. We're going to be dry again as long as this thing stays offshore, which we think it will. I'm EPA DBA meteorologist Bobby Marcher. That is your outlook for September 11th, 2023. Have a great Monday.